the theater. There will be no golf claps and sipping of tea in here. This is spoken word, and in spoken word we have a very hype audience, so I'm going to need you guys to clap and snap and, you know, do one of those when you hear a line or something that really invokes your emotion, okay? So let me, uh, let me hear your best snapping if you guys are snappers. Yes. And if you're clapping, let me hear your best clap. never will understand the way your parents looked at you when you said, Mom, Dad, I'm gay, but I do. I know the fire that engulfed your life. I know the way your day turned into a knife and how strife was brought on with a knife held in the hand of someone who doesn't understand that who you love is not a sin nor a choice. When Martin Luther King stood in the spotlight, people called him a revolutionary. Did he spend one second thinking of you? Did he spend one second thinking of you rotting in a jailhouse cell just for being yourself, imprisoned for a sexuality, what they called an abnormality, when you, were given to be, when you were given the choice to be yourself a gay man or yourself a black man, you chose both. 
black and queer. Thank you, Maynard Rustin, for showing me discrimination doesn't just run skin deep, that men can be hated for more than just what we see. Thank you for showing me the tragic past that we share. Thank you for showing me that black history isn't just about being black, it's about people like you that knew that equality for all does not mean we let our queer brothers and sisters fall into the background. Suicide. Black and queer, Baynard. You are the bridge between our communities, two of which who spend too much time being denied their opportunities. Thank you, Baynard Rus Rustin. A thank you is what I want to say. It's because of people like you that I walk free today. You made your way to New York. Talented, beautiful, successful, a mega star. You paved the way for future stars. An activist who was blacklisted from the professional community. Ostracized because you publicized, publicized the Vietnam War. You said, you send the best of our country off to be shot in Maine. No wonder they take pot. I guess they didn't want the blame. because your wings were caged, you chose to see no boundaries, allowing every word to soar like a mockingbird. Through the bars for every ear to hear, you spoke not a fantasy, simply the words of humankind. You taught us a story of more than a grayscale, you saw for those who couldn't see color, and you sang for those who dared not speak. Through every fight, you represented the light, you revealed the power of courage hidden within a repressed self, and that is stronger than any weapon. We will continue to read your everlasting words, not because they've given us an answer but because every time they remind us of our nature, so pure in itself and so far from what we've become. Dear Fred Hampton, I want to say sorry on behalf of the ignorant, then and now. I'm sorry you were viewed as a threat, since back then feeding black children was considered a crime, and so they pushed and they shoved until May 26, 1969, the day you got persecuted for stealing good humor bars. And so the newspaper headings started to fly. No quarter for wild beasts. You should let them die. The Chicago police were given an order to approach all Panther suspects prepared to shoot. I'm sorry they wanted you dead. You had a wife and a son. You were a good man. On the day that you died, you fell asleep to the voice of your mother. And so at 4.45, they stormed the apartment, fired two bullets into your head. I am sorry, but your message, the cause, will never be dead. into slavery with no hope like you did. In class, I remember reading about slavery and how there was no slavery without violence. No slavery without violence, the teacher said. Why should anyone be beaten down because of the color of their skin? Who are we as white people or is anyone to think that others are beneath us because of the color of their skin? You always were struck during the day because of the color of your skin. I remember this one time where I read that you were struck five times before breakfast, leaving you with permanent scars that you carried on for the rest of your life. Lashes, scars, burns, and bruises, and all because of what? Because you, Harriet Tubman, stood up for yourself. You refused to be treated like some type of property. And even with all that physical damage, which caused you to brain damage, you were the main help in the Underground Railroad. Helped free slaves, born into a family with no hope, no sense of living, but you always had hope. Dear Laverne Cox, to start off, I love your work on Orange is the New Black. As the first openly transgender person to be nominated for a Golden Globe, I am grateful for how strong you are. From attempting suicide at 11 to gracing the red carpet, I am so happy you are still allowed to tell your story. Happy you are happy. Happy you are making girls, women, young and old happy. That they do not have to live up to the expectations placed on them at birth. Happy you have risen from the rubble to dismantle gender expectations. Happy you are focused on what is important, not what is or is not in our pants, not what is expected of us due to our gender or sexuality, not a person's success or failures, not the pigment of one's skin, but rather the discrimination people will face due to these things. You draw attention to these issues, and for that I am grateful. You represent trans, you represent black, blacks. You represent everyone who has had a struggle. Dear Laverne Cox, thank you. Here in Tupac, 
Raised on that west side. West side till you die. Born in New York, but kept banging in Cali. A rapper, an activist, an, a rapper, an actor, an activist, the thug life that patted across his stomach, but it was like the thug that kept on loving. I see no changes. He woke up in the morning and he asked himself, would life be better if he just blasted himself? Take, talking about things that are still happening today, cops popping blackheads like it's acne. I say, let me repeat that. Cops popping blackheads like it's acne. But that's just the way it is. Things will never be the same. It's by the young black youth, even a young white boy trying to jump in the booth. And I keep spitting like I'm missing a tooth. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get by a message with his, with his message. Young Chuck, young thug, Chief Keith, Little Reese, what is that, even a message? You didn't die, you're still in the music today. I hear you in the ones like J. Cole, Kendrick, Drake, and the others with a message. Told things to understand the struggle, I understand the whole struggle. Selling bricks to get mama off the block, passing the rock, to work on the jump shot, hand on the mic to make that hot. Talk Respect himself. He had to love brothers. You couldn't do anything but love each other. It seems like we have a miscommunication that's lost in the translation. Doesn't matter whether we're black, Asian, Latino, Caucasian. What matters that we come together as a nation. I won't overnight. We have to be patient. I hope you hear, see, feel, know what I'm saying. The black of the berry, the sweet of the juice, a new genocide. I know you hear it in the news. The only thing that batch protects is a bullet in a black kid's chest. Ooh. I lost a whole lot before I was born. I guess what they say, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I uh, feel that. I feel that. All right. Yo, you know, I like to take my class before I do my thing, so crowd. Alright, let's go. Dear Louis Armstrong, I'm writing this letter to you because you, you are one of the most influential jazz artists of all time. The reason why I'm so ingrained in the music today, the unique way you sing and play the trumpet, yo man, it's extraordinary. But hold up, let's go back to a time then when I was two feet off the ground and I would cry when my parents left me behind. I remember hearing your song in the back of my mind, Stardust. Yo, that was a line. <sighs> <laughs> Got to smile on my face every time. <laughs> Hold up, flash forward to when I did a presentation on an influential black person, and I'm proud to say I chose you. But let's be serious. As a child, you were raised during a difficult time, in a difficult place, where you did not take what they handed you, but took what they owed you, greatness. Showing me that dreams can be achieved if you just believe. Amen. Uh, All right. So I say pops, you're the best. I hold you in my thoughts as I push forward to a better future. I'm gonna say these words to you. Say, yo, I'm gonna say these words to you. So they become mesmer memorized in your mind for a time when you fall and the world seems to be against you. Keep your head up, push forward, have faith, and never let your dreams blow away with the winds. Don Stewart, 2015, let's go. Drugs and alcoholism are not, not so fair trade for our land and manpower. They say my 
men have lost power or they can only gain it back in certain arenas. These last puppet masters, I swear today I cry for my people, my brothers and sisters, I feel you. I see you looking at me in front of the The one thing that doesn't belong and truly I tell you I just don't know. I swear it was easier to recognize my unwanted presence but no black signs in the window still showed. So bold and so cold, I remember when mosques were still considered holy places and every headline on CNN News were these so-called terrorist Muslim faces and I remember when the continent, Africa, was not the infected but the infector of knowledge. With knowledgeable teachers and down in the Americas, they came with their preachers and knocked down our empires and now my Latin American brothers and sisters were the desire. Last short of breath at these situations when I see my people choose not to fight these systems but their own nations to the point where they got his eyes wide shut, living survival of the fittest to the point where my brothers think their only options consist of MBA, BET, the block, or watch their lives diminish to the point where my sisters feel that we are at the very bottom of our class. So just to get by, we skip the thought process and start shaking our, and I don't mean to be critical, but these are critical times. Our survival as a race depends on you, me, and we, so don't let the media fool you, and don't let democracy deceive, cause just cause you're not on the plantation no more does not mean that you are free, so. Start at the bottom and work our way up to the top. So let's and let's stop over into those doors.